If you saw Don't Worry Darling and were a little bit upset with the final act, you came to the right place. If you didn't see Don't Worry Darling and don't care at all about the film and just want to listen to a grown man complain for like 10 minutes, you also came to the right place. Let's begin. Don't Worry Darling is a narrative mess. A movie that starts with a premise very simple. A bunch of housewives living in a utopia with their husbands. They're out bringing home the bacon and the ladies are there ready to fry it in a pan. And then head to the boudoir for some mind altering sex. Or you could just throw off the entire dinner spread you spent hours making and get condolingus right there on the table. Florence Pugh plays Alice, a young, beautiful woman who loves her life in their perfect place in the 50s. She cooks, she cleans, she has an occasional drunk party with her fun neighbor Bunny, played by a skeletal version of Olivia Wilde. What happened to Olivia Wilde? She was a beautiful actress, who at one point decided to never eat again, and now she looks like my nightmares! Just put a little bit of weight on. Look at Florence Pugh. She's healthy. She's vibrant. Come on, Olivia. You can do it again. I know you can. Alice is married to Jack, played by Harry Styles. I wonder if they named her Alice because she is down in a rabbit hole. She's in a matrix of sorts. Because this essentially is the matrix. Wait, and Harry Styles is named Jack? Like a jackrabbit? Oh, I get you. I see you, Olivia Wilde. Well, she didn't write this. Three other people did. And I have to believe they don't really know how men think. And we'll get to that in a little while. But for right now, she's in a utopian world in the 50s. Chris Pine, he's, he's not in it much. They didn't utilize him near enough. But he's like the founder, the creator of this world that they're in. His character's name is Frank. Wow. Oh. It's not really anything to that name. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the, the Alice and the Harry thing were totally coincidental. Let's keep going. Alice is seen living her best life, but weird things start to happen. The walls start to close in, both metaphorically and literally, as at one point she's almost crushed against glass. I have to point out one more time. I said this in my regular review. Yeah, I put out a review for this already. If you're new here, please subscribe. I post tons of movie reviews, reactions, poster commentary, skits, everything related to the movie and TV industry. I'm all over it. Okay, I'd love to have you. Anyway, the sound design, fantastic. I love when she's up against the window. <laughs> At one point she cracks an egg and there's nothing in it. It's just <laughs> Nothing in the world sounds like this egg cracking. It's fantastic. So even though oddities are happening from time to time, she is getting these strange visions, she's having nightmares, it isn't until the neighbor lady, Margaret, starts to blow her fucking gasket when things really start to fall, when things start to come off the wheels very quickly. Kiki's put under house arrest. She isn't seen for days. The doctors are trying to help her out, but eventually she loses her mind, climbs up onto a rooftop, slits her throat, falls down. This is all witnessed by Alice, who then obviously has a freak out herself. Now she's questioning everything. Who's lying to us? Is everything here a charade? or a charade if you must. Where do the husbands go to work every day? They say they're working on something, but it's left very vague. It's left surreal. The ladies can't leave the town. This also has a Truman Show vibe to it. If you try to leave, things happen. At one point, she does get off of a trolley when she sees a plane crash into the side of the mountain. She scales the mountain, gets to this weird facility at the top, puts her hands on the glass and then passes out. You get these weird visuals, creepy ladies dancing. It's all in the form of an eyeball. A lot of eye symbolism in this, making me think, you know what, something's going on with her eyes. Turns out, there is. It's uh, Olivia Wilde that I've been talking about this movie for just a matter of minutes. And I've already basically covered the first hour and 45 minutes of this thing. The movie's too long. You could have cut so much of the fat from the beginning, half hour or so. We established so early on that these ladies are following a trend. Every day is like a playbook that they're going through the motions of. We didn't need to see them go shopping. We didn't need to see them make the same meal over and over again. Just so much redundancy. And what pisses me off is it was done well enough to keep me on the hook for such a disappointing twist at the end. Are you ready for it, folks? You strapped in, can you handle it? It turns out they're not there at all. This is a virtual world. They are in a matrix. Their eyes are being held open. People are putting water drops in it to keep them from drying. I don't know who's moving their legs or the rest of their body or who's feeding them. I didn't see anything hooked up. 
to their veins, pumping food in their system. But there's so much left on the table, so much unanswered. And again, I don't need all the answers, but you have to provide a foundation that makes even a tiny amount of sense. The Matrix did that. There's machines keeping humans alive in these pods. They're in like a, a dream state. They're in a liquid that's clearly keeping their body going full of energy while they're producing their own energy. That makes sense. That's perfect. This is so freaking out of left field. Now I will say 15 minutes into this movie, I turned to my buddy and I called 50% of the plot twist right away. I said, this isn't the 50s. This is modern era. They are just in this weird cultish community that's pretending it's the 50s. That's kind of spot on. It's just that it wasn't in a real world at all. It was in a fake world, which I think is worse. You should have made it its own little utopia away from the world, like uh, like the village M. Night Shyamalan vehicle. That would have been so much easier to explain and to digest. But as it stands, we find out that Harry in the real world is a loser. Alice is putting food on the table. She's working back to back to back night shifts, trying to make ends meet, and they can't afford their place in New York. Could they move somewhere else? Yeah. Can nurses find a job anywhere? Absolutely. Actually, I don't know if she's a nurse or a doctor. Either way, there's no shortage of jobs in the medical field. Move somewhere else. This leaves Jack feeling like a beta male, and he is suffering from a major alpha male complex. This is where the writers are so far off the mark. Now I understand there is a weird small group of males out there that do wanna go back to the simpler life where they put food on the table and the lady stayed home and cooked and cleaned and you didn't have the internet and you didn't have modern technology. I understand that's there to a degree, but I'm pretty sure they still like to watch sports and go hunting and do other manly things that they don't get to do in this virtual reality world. How boring is their life that this is the best they could come up with? Going home to their wife who they didn't modify in any way. I mean, I mean, not that you need to modify Florence Pugh. She is perfect, but still, Olivia Munn, they could have put some more weight on that woman. I think for most guys, you'd want ESPN on somewhere 24 seven. You'd want to be playing video games 24 seven. You would want multiple women at your disposal, not necessarily even married, not necessarily having children. You'd want a giant slip and slide that runs down the top of the house, goes into a ball pit where you can fight sharks and whales and shit without getting hurt because you're in a fake world. That's what I would imagine is just a small portion of what some men would want. Setting that aside, what we end up getting is Harry knocking Alice out, conceivably, we don't see that happen, but we do see him drag her body to some seedy underground back alley area where they, she's put in a bed, they lock her eyes up, they start putting the drops in, they uh, register the VR area, and then he sits next to her in the bed, and then he joins her, and he also gets hooked up. And then that's, I guess, their life until their bodies are disposed of or something. I don't know, how is he making money? How is he affording this? I would imagine this is incredibly costly. Was he skimming money from her and giving it to whoever is in charge of this? Chris Pine, maybe? We don't even know that because he's killed at one point and his wife takes over. I thought maybe she was the mastermind the whole time. No, that's just like a thing they felt like doing. Nothing about this movie makes a lick of sense. It's just completely vapid. It's basic. It's like they had no understanding of how VR would work and they thought, let's make it a virtual reality world. Let's put men in that we don't really understand either. And that's the movie. And we can't forget about the ending where Alice drives away in a high speed chase against a bunch of red coats. As they chase her up a hill, she gets back to that uh, final center point. I don't know what that's supposed to be. She puts her hands on the glass and we fade to the title. And you just hear her breathing, assuming she woke up in the real world. But what does it matter? But who cares? We don't get to find out what she does in the real world. I would be very interested to know how she got out of that bed without falling over because none of her limbs work. Uh, she's probably handcuffed to the thing. Who are the people that are looking after her? They probably have a few things to say about her running away. A movie like this lives and dies by the final act. The whole thing builds and builds to a crescendo. And if that crescendo doesn't hit, it's a crescendo. And that's what it was exactly, it was a crescendo. Speaking of editing things out, there is a moment so cringy in this movie. I don't know how a single person looked at that and said, yeah, let's, let's keep that in. Let's keep all of that in. And that's when Jack is dancing around like a complete jackass. 
Maybe that's why his name was Jack, actually. Maybe it's not a rabbit thing at all, but just the, the dumbass thing. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but Harry Styles was at one point in a boy band and he could dance. In a scene so horribly bad, I went to the bathroom, I didn't even need to go, just to get out of there, and when I came back, he was still dancing. All right, there's my rant on Don't Worry Darling. What a terrible title. I always forget it. Anyway, let me know in the comments if you saw the movie or have no desire to and why. Did I cover everything you wanted me to? No, I didn't mention Harry Styles acting. I didn't think it was that bad, folks. I thought he did a fine job. I know it's popular to rag on the guy, knock him down a few pegs, but really, he put in the work. And I did believe it. I really did. Anyway, let me know. Leave a comment. Like the video if you had a good time. Subscribe if you haven't. I post tons of movie and TV show related content here each and every week. I'd love to have you. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Since you're still here, let me rattle off some of the other places you can find me. TikTok. Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Become a member there for only a dollar a month if you want. Get access to 300 plus movies. I'm also on Twitch at Adam Does Movies. There's also a Discord you can join for free at Adam Does Movies where we talk about movies all the time. And I even have a merch store. You can find all these links in my link tree in the description below. Good luck. <laughs> You're gonna need it.